back into open session, uh, if you would read the... All right. To the best of your knowledge, were the only matters discussed in the closed meeting public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements, and that only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the closed meeting? Need a roll call. Mr. Frank? Aye. Mr. Barron? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Goodwin? Aye. Hi. <coughs> okay. Uh, that brings us up to the public hearing. So if I could. All right. Hear from you, sir. Thank you. Um, I'll keep it brief. I don't want to start hacking a lot. Um, uh, what we have, of course, is REZ 1101, um, and I want to provide you all with a general summary. Uh, the applicant, uh, Signature Station uh, Development, is requesting a s that a 75.8 acre parcel currently zoned agricultural be to be rezoned to include both commercial and residential districts. Approximately 28.15 acres will be zoned um, C2, which is general commercial, and the remainder, which is 47.65 acres, would be zoned R4, which is multifamily residential. The applicant is proposing a maximum of 230 townhome un units on the proposed residential site and approximately 222,300 square feet um, up for the commercial site. And I'll get to the proffers in a second. Um, the applicant is also proposing approximately 17 acres of open space for the site, including two 10,000 square foot playground areas serving the townhomes, as well as trails and sidewalks to promote interconnectivity with existing and future development. Uh, the subject property is, is identified as tax map 4.3 it has approximately 1,400 feet of frontage on Germana Highway, and it's located approximately 2,800 feet west of Flat Run Road, Route 601, and is situated between Hampton Lane and Somerset Ridge Road, Route 708. Uh, the comprehensive plan is, has de designated this area mixed use, and it's been that way, I believe, for several decades, two decades at, the, at least. Um, and as I mentioned, the site is owned agricultural, uh, adjacent zone includes agriculture, planned residential, R3, and then general commercial, C2. Staff gave a recommendation of approval for the rezoning request um, for both R4 and C2. Uh, and we all, staff also provided some conditions, recommended conditions. And the Planning Commission voted 3-2 uh, to approve it and forward it to you all at their February 21st meeting. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Oh, um, and Mr. Dudley just reminded me, I, was g I forgot to speak to the proffers. Uh, there's been some discussions uh, with staff and with the applicant regarding um, changing some of the proffers for staff's recommendation. And what they've proposed, one of the more notable uh, changes has been to increase the commercial area to 237,000 square feet uh, because originally they were going to give a 5,000 square foot area for the county's use. And so we're working in within that configuration. Hopefully we, we've identified it in the new proffers that have been submitted to you all for your review. So. Okay. Okay. All right. <coughs> uh, would the applicant like to speak? Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, my name is Rex Edwards. I'm an attorney out of Culpeper with Davies, Barrow, Will, Llewellyn, and Edwards. Uh, Butch Davies has been working with the applicant, has been working with the county staff. Unfortunately, Mr. Davies is out of town, out of the uh, state this evening, so I'll be here assisting the applicant and uh, addressing any questions that the board may have. Also with me this evening is John Markham Tony, and also Bob Dudley on behalf of the applicant, and also to assist with addressing any uh, questions that the board may have. We have with us Philip Hammer, who has prepared a financial analysis of the project, some of the numbers that are included in the application. Um, so everyone is here available for any questions that you may have. It's my understanding that uh, the board is aware that the applicant has been working with Mr. Zodi and that there have been some modifications made to the proffers and I have some proffers dated April 22nd, 2013, which I understand or at least I am working under the understanding that those are uh, in your packet and that you are familiar with those. I'm certainly happy to go through those in detail, but since it is my understanding that those have been made available to you, 
Um, if it's your pleasure, I'll simply make ourselves available for any questions that you may have. Okay. <coughs> Anybody have any questions? Okay. <coughs> well, in that case, we'll go ahead and we'll open the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> My name is Phil Hammer. I'm the vice president with S. Pats and Associates. We're economic consultants and specialize in real estate development. Uh, we do market studies and we do impact analysis. And I'm here tonight to talk about the fiscal impact analysis or financial analysis for the revenues and costs that will be generated by Signature Station. Um, what the analysis does is we look at the revenues, tax revenues that are generated based on published tax rates, and we look at the costs to the county based on the county's budget. And the difference between these two is the net revenue impact, which in this case is a healthy surplus of over a million dollars annually. We're talking about the development after full build out and stable occupancy of the commercial and the residential components. Uh, in the early years, when the commercial is developed first, um, we can be generating up to a net revenue of $900,000 a year, even before the commercial, before the residential comes online, uh, which I think is a, a substantial upfront flow for the county. To summarize the revenues a little bit, let me talk about um, the revenues that come from the residential portion would be about $600,000 a year at build out. Uh, the commercial portion, about $1.1 million per year at build out for a total of $1.7 million in tax revenues each year. Uh, the costs, uh, for the residential, uh, about 400,000 a year. For the commercial, about 200,000 a year. For the cost of 600,000 a year. So if you compare the revenues of 1.7 million a year with the costs of 0.6 of 600,000 a year, you come up with the net of $1,100,000 a year after build out. Uh, I can give you more detail on the revenues if you'd like, just to speak briefly. 40% of, re of the revenues come from the retail sales tax. 32% uh, will come from the uh, real property tax. And the remaining 28% come from six smaller tax sources for 100% of the revenues. And at that point, I'll I'll stop for questions, if you have questions about any more detail. You're saying that the revenue from the, uh, from the residential <coughs> is 600K and that the cost to the county is 200K? It's 400K and the net revenue from the residential would be 200K. And it's 400 and a net would be 200. And that would be 200. So you see that the residential does cover its costs substantially. Um, I have a, actually a question about that um, because um, if you don't mind, sure. I don't want to like rapid fire you, but or um, the 600,000, um, I actually had the Commissioner of Revenue send us tax cards from um, the townhomes next to it. Mm -hmm. And the higher end are assessing at um, 150. Five, so that's bringing in about eleven hundred dollars a year in revenue. So let's bump it up a little bit. But even at twelve hundred dollars a year, that's um, two hundred seventy-five thousand. So, what number did you use? We used two hundred thousand as our sales price for the townhomes. Right, but that's not what our current assessment is running on. on well, this will homes. this will be uh, a certain a number of years down in the future. And um, this, is, this is based on an economical development cost. It's hard to do development without um, $200,000 prices for the townhomes. Uh, at a lower price, they're going to be difficult to build. 
you saying that lower price townhomes are difficult to build? Yes. So we do kind yes. of, uh, if you don't mind me cutting. No, please. Uh, basically, we, we anticipate starting to pull into traffic. That pays for a lot of the infrastructure that actually is put in place. At a price point of 150, that it just doesn't look like it, it's not. Right, but there's a difference. Good. There's a difference between what you pay for something versus what. Absolutely. What something is assessed at. Sure. So right now the assessment is on on those townhomes is about 150 and we actually base our taxes on assessment absolutely right we well, agree that, but at this point and philip you don't mind yeah. no please we we don't plan to build the townhouses for at least three years at this point <coughs> expecting the market to come back so okay at, so y'all actually those, are going to build them sooner because at the planning commission no, it was not. i think it was we talked about it maybe like eight years well we thought eight years would be a total build out oh process. build out okay we're looking okay. at three to five years for a start okay all right and that was where uh basically where our thinking was that the market is the market is coming back granted the assessments right now are very low mm -hmm. i mean you see what's closing out there for townhomes we're, we're right at the 150 mark right now in uh, germana heights i believe they're in the mid 100s up in wilderness shores they're starting listing their homes in the low 200s now i'm not sure where the assessments are they probably haven't got there because they haven't been able to study those new prices yet so that's, we're anticipating that, obviously, to rise. And that rise has been gradually happening over the last couple of years, thankfully, um, in our area. And I, I mean this with the uh, general Locust Grove area and, and around the uh, major towns. Keep going. I'm sorry. I only uh, asked because he asked. We started it. I think, <laughs> Thank you. I think you've got uh, a good answer to the question. Uh, but you say that... Uh, uh, you change the first proffer such that the uh, uh, you're not willing to build at least and occupy at least 25% of the commercial uh, only for the uh, uh, first three years. If after three years you, you've done nothing with the, uh, uh, the commercial, you still would have the right then to start the residential. Well, we, we put that in there for, uh, for reasons that we want the commercial first. That's what's going to the paper we, we did it as a uh, and an or situation as far as getting 25 percent of the at least commercial which we expect more obviously uh, I, I but understand we wanted that, to give but, the county some assurances that you know we're not jumping in and, and looking to do residential for years down the road just for what miss abs had said the market's not there but if the but if nothing happens in the commercial you're starting to build residential three years from now it depends on the market I mean, if, we, if we're in the 150 range of where we're at, we can't afford to do the townhomes. There are many thousands of feet of uh, water and sewer lines that have to be put in. There are uh, a storage tower we're gonna have to provide as, as agreed with RSC, as you, as you know as well. And at that price point, we might as well just walk, go home, because it, uh, it won't be affordable for us to even produce a project at those price points. So that, that's why that's we're, we're putting, a, we're speculating that in three years that the market will hopefully come back. I mean, right now we're, uh, <coughs> there's no chance for us to even think about doing residential. Our, our main focus is the commercial. I understand, but uh, with that, uh, by adding that uh, within three years uh, criteria, you sort of, uh, uh, you sort of uh, backpedaled on that, on that commitment on the commercial first. That's how I see that. Well, that wasn't the anticipated uh, intent. It was really just to, uh, to accommodate both moving forward. Um, like I said, the market is really going to be the dictating factor for, for the townhome itself. Okay. Well, can I ask a question legally then? So what is the intent of that last sentence? What, are, what is it, the, the, the sentence that was added yesterday? Or it's within zoning approval, whichever occurred first? It's a little ambiguous, so I, I wanted to... I'm not an attorney to, to exactly give you that intent, and that's something that we talked about, that if that needs to be uh, adjusted to, to get it currently, and that's something that's going to adhere to. What are we what? attending with that sentence? Well, I will tell you that um, I think my understanding is that this is language that was worked out relatively at the last minute between Mr. Zodi and the applicant, that... Um, no, that this was language that was sprung on me at the last minute. It, it was not drafted by an attorney, and obviously not reviewed in advance by an attorney. So it may be that the concept is is not expressed the way it's intended to be expressed. That's why I was asking what, you, what the concept. And again, I, I didn't I didn't draft it, and again, didn't confer with you in advance. So it may be something that requires some slight review. Um, I will tell you that there has been a history 
uh, the applicant throughout the project working very closely with the county staff and there has been some modification of, uh, of these proffers to be responsive to concerns raised both in public hearings by county staff and I'm confident they'll continue to be willing to do so. Well, the first, first part of that proffer, uh, the 25% was, was, has been there for a while. It was that uh, three years uh, of zoning, uh, within three years zoning, that, uh, uh, that came in uh, more recently. We were asked for a timeline in, in our conversations back and forth. What is your timeline? Make it more specific uh, by staff. To, uh, so we put that in there, hoping for feedback before we hit the meeting, since, it, since we were just asked that. How important is that three years? We've got to put some kind of a thing on it because we're paying taxes on commercial and residential land until such time. That we can begin to something. We will, we will, you we will. What you would like yeah, we, we thought that was a reasonable time frame in which to start residential well, if the market would was. You hold property and pay taxes on it if you tie a part of your land. <coughs> well, the, the point is, you're asking us to, uh, uh, you, you've come here and said that the, uh, uh, that the, res that the commercial is coming first. And then, but you put, but you put this exception. Well, except for three years, that's what you've said. You really say that. So when you put that exception in there, I get a little, a little uh, less, uh, uh, less confidence in the fact that the res the commercial is coming first. That's something we can review. Uh, at, uh, yeah. Are you in a position to describe what you're trying to achieve well, without, we, without we, the exact? legal language just sort of basically basically we wanted to have an opportunity you know we we feel that the commercial is going to exceed that you know granted i guess uh it's it's kind of crossing itself out as far as adding the three years but it was more or less that if we were able to start the residential with with the commercial going as well but you know in all actuality we, we believe that the, the commercial is obviously going to go first um the way we, we are looking at it. and and we apologize for the uh we were dealing with a couple vacations. Tom and Greg were both out last week, and we tried to get the comments back. But um, like I said, I drafted them, and our intent was more or less to give give the assurance that we're not going in there to start residential. And that's this is a mixed-use project. Our, our whole basis for this project was to bring the commercial in that will also attract new residential as well. And that was always our intent at first. And then if that's something where we have to uh, obviously revise, you know, I apologize for the legal... Uh, error as far as the way it was stated. We asked, uh, I mean, there were some suggestions with regard to uh, proffers on, uh, on uh, accumulation of litter. Uh, you didn't include any of that. Is there a rationale behind that? Absolutely. Uh, right now, you know, this is the rezoning for property that's not, uh, we don't have a final end user. We don't know what that, um, how it's going to end up and, and how it's going to be configured in our commercial space. And uh, at this point, we feel that's going to be a factor of our, you know, we, we fully intend that there's going to be a special use permit involved with this property. And at that point, you know, there were some issues with uh, some landscaping issues, litter, and uh, some uh, low impact development, which we intend on using. But uh, until the point when we get a little more engineering done after our uh, core walkthrough and know exactly what our impacts are going to be, that's, that's really to, to be able to focus on that and give you an exact uh, proffer on what that's going to be going forward. At this point, we thought that was premature to, to throw that in there without knowing what, what that was going to be in the end. And I, I went over that as well with Greg previously. Uh, question on stormwater. Are, are you doing a build out for the 237,000? To, as for, far as timing for, goes? For, no, for <clears throat> for your stormwater, are you doing it piecemeal or are you doing it? That hasn't been determined yet. It's really uh, how that, how we, uh, what type of anchor stores we bring in and attract as far as how that's going to be determined, how it's going to go. I mean, it's going to be designed as a total site. But once we start getting some uh, interest in the property, which we have already, um, at this point we, we want to be able to develop it properly with the right tenants. So for us to go out and put, uh, areas where these future buildings are going to be we restrict ourselves to what that you know what that tenant can be we're not really uh depending on what that large anchor may be 
that's going to determine the rest of our, our pads and how that's laid out. But yes, we're, we're going to do the total commercial as a whole study as far as how we handle that stormwater. Absolutely. It'd be well, crazy then not you to have a that. site designed for your stormwater. Yes, absolutely. Already. It, okay. It's got to be done as a whole. Or, you know, we did we did have some initial designs done where we have two large sediment ponds in the center of the property to accommodate all the sheet flow that exists today, prior to obviously development, which will which will increase with some of the impervious spaces. But we intend to to design that accordingly and using obviously low impact development. But but the proffer that we just thought was in, uh, a little premature because we were not sure. On what that is, because it's not engineered at this point. Okay. All right. <coughs> Any other questions? I, okay. I was going to read you a little passage. <laughs> it's, it's, well, my name is John Marcantoni. I uh, I live in uh, Somerset Farms at 1532 Morris Pond Drive in Locust Grove. We, Signature Series Development, purchased this property over 10 years ago in an effort to develop it in accordance with the county's comprehensive plan, which designates our property to be mixed use. As this area has the infrastructure available to support and a location to accommodate such use as well as not impacting any historical sites or creating adverse environmental problems, our mixed use proposal is a win-win project. Now that Walmart has moved into the neighborhood, it reinforces our proposed use. As indicated by our fiscal study, as Phil Hammer had presented, uh, this mixed-use development is self-sustaining and covers all costs and provides a generous revenue stream for years to come. Based upon our consultant's figures, our mixed-use development will generate in excess of $1 million annually full build-out. Our development plan is to focus on our commercial component first to attract a large commercial anchor along with a mixture of restaurants, service, retail, and businesses, which we expect to take one to two years to bring in the right tenants for our development. As the residen residential market is still currently flat, we do not expect to develop a residential component until the mar market dictates, which we expect to be within three years. Part of that proffer package guarantees that the residential component cannot begin within three years or when at least 25% of the commercial component is complete. And obviously that language has to be adjusted to accommodate that. Uh, we want to build a balanced project that will offer new and current residents a place to eat and shop and for some even leaving their cars at home to be able to walk to the uh, amenities. Uh, with this strategy, it would, be, it would create a large positive cash flow to the county from, start, from the start and grow from there. Since our planning commission uh, recommendation, there had been building interest from possible future tenants, including two national corporations, one including Chick-fil-A. Uh, the other I'm not at liberty to disclose as requested by the firm, but is a firm that generally follows Walmart's stores. Uh, we will strive to bring the best and highest use to our development. Since our planning commission hearing, there were a few concerns regarding traffic, the need for more residential development, and the uh, financial impact to the county as well as inadequate proffers. In regards to our traffic impact, we commissioned a traffic study as required by VDOT to extensively study our impacts. As indicated in our traffic study, we would be adding two turn lanes at the intersection of Route 708 and Routes 3, as well as turn lanes into the commercial and residential components. Uh, in addition, there will be a right in and right out on Route 3 and Hampton Lane, as well as a possible crossover at Route 3 and Hampton Lane, if required from our proffered future study, which we believe will be uh, uh, very helpful to the traffic situation. There were concerns about the ability to, for Route 708 to handle the additional flow of traffic. However, with the added lanes on 708, as well as the improvements to Hampton Lane, a good percentage of the traffic will be directed towards Hampton Lane. This was verified by BDOT along with the approval of our complete plan. There was also discussion re regarding the need for additional residential development. Signature Station will offer new residents a choice of living in low maintenance townhomes that will offer shopping, restaurants, services, and jobs. We anticipate our townhomes be an attractive product that will be available starting in the 200s. Uh, according to the current MRIS listing service, there are 124 active listings in Locust Grove. Out of those 124, 94 homes are located in Lake of the Woods, seven in Somerset, and three in Wilderness Shores, and two are the only townhomes that are available in the listing service in Germana Heights. We are aware that there are townhomes in, uh, in Wilderness Shores, but they obviously were not listed. Uh, we feel that our location and amenities will be an attractive choice for our new residents as well as a valuable investment. Uh, just a note, our perspective, you know, some prospective tenants have asked about the expected residential growth in this area of the county so that they may properly project their business as well. 
As far as the financial impact of the county, Signature Station will pay for itself as well as providing an annual income for years to come. We expect mixed-use development's annual tax revenue to exceed the cost of all impacts to the county, including the cost of schools, fire and rescue, and other county provided services prior to the completion of a residential component. We will be providing all the infrastructure necessary for our project, including road improvements, water and sewer, and as well as a storage tower that RSA had uh, uh, requested. After many discussions with the county, we have revised our proffer package that uh, you have seen today, including a cash proffer in the amount of 300000 that would be directed towards the construction of a new E911 center. This would prevent the county from paying out of pocket and raising taxes for this required infrastructure in order to provide the residents with an updated and modern 911 service. In addition, Signature Series will provide extensive buffers along Route 3, 708, and Hampton Lane to preserve and provide an uh, attractive mixed-use development. In conclusion, this project is one part of a solution in making Orange County prosper in the coming years. It will provide new residents with a desirable place to live, all new and ex existing residents, a place to shop, sit down and have a meal, as well as other possible services and a substantial tax base. As a resident and a father of two children enrolled in our school system, I believe this project is vital to supplementing the county's income to continue to pro provide for its residents. Thank you, and I hope you can uh, support our rezoning application. Thank you. Any questions? I'd be happy to take them. I have none. <coughs> Anybody else? We'll do the public comment at this time. All right. I have questions, but I'll shut up. All right. So you're through with your presentation? Yes. In that case, we will go on then to the public hearing. I would ask that you try to limit yourself to three minutes. Uh, we, we will be giving you notice at the end of three minutes, <coughs> at which point in time I ask you to try to finish up. No, we're, we're going to go to, I, I always find that, un, yes, it unnerves people and it's, it's a whole lot better just when we get to three minutes, please at that time try to finish up. So if you would, first speaker. The first speaker is Karen Kornbeck, 2062 College Drive, Lotus Grove, State Position. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Karen Kornbeck. <coughs> excuse me, the Executive Director of the Germana Foundation, and tonight I'm speaking on behalf of our Board of Trustees and our 850 members. The Germana Foundation thanks the Orange County Board of Supervisors for the opportunity to voice its strong opposition to the flawed Signature Series development proposal to rezone six, 76 acres from agricultural land to high-density commercial and residential development. The Germanic Foundation supports economic growth and the cultivation of our cultural heritage. It is a balance between the human development of those born and those yet to be born. Since 1956, the Germana Foundation has preserved the largest portion of the first European settlement in what was once the western frontier of the British Empire. It is that shared sense of heritage and responsibility to the community that led the Germana Foundation to donate 100 acres of land to build the first campus of Germana Community College here in Orange County. On April 15th, civic and business leaders, including Supervisors Frame and White, and we thank you again, came to our headquarters to meet with representatives of a half dozen German bioenergy companies interested in investing in Orange County. And while we have been far-sighted in bringing greater opportunity to people living in Orange County today, we also work to safeguard the cultural landscape for future generations of Orange County citizens. Local heritage organizations, like the Germana Foundation, comprised of local citizens and business representatives, strive to meet the daunting challenge of preserving local historical resources that are reflected in comprehensive plans. Yet those very cultural resources are routinely destroyed by development and rezoning approvals. Approval of the signature series proposal would also spoil the authentic experience sought by tourists to historic sites at that end of the county and as well affect the Orange County merchants who service them. We need to remember the cultural landscape of the Germana settlement is fragile. It cannot be rebuilt if lost. If it is lost, future citizens suffer. The Germana Foundation has much at stake in this peninsula of land and has for 56 years and throughout the region. The Germana Foundation therefore respectfully requests 
that the Orange County Board of Supervisors deny this rezoning proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Second speaker is William Eaton, 35410 Wilderness Shores Way. Thank you. Uh, my name is William Edens, and I'm the president of the Wilderness Shores Homeowners Association. And I come in opposition of the rezoning of the request of REZ 11-01 as submitted because we feel there's no public necessity for additional housing in the area. Presently, Tricord Incorporated will need to build about 600 homes in the subdivision to meet the proffers that were approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2002. And of those proffers, it includes bringing Wilderness Shores Way up to state standards and realigning um, State Route 711 um, as their proffers. And I have a little proffer history that I'm attached to this and give to you. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for having the public hearing tonight. Um, I come before you as a resident of Somerset Farms community who has spoken with almost a majority or near to a majority of the residents in the Somerset community in the last several months as I've been gathering signatures for a petition um, for something that I'll, for some paperwork I have to be turning in at the end of this week. In speaking to those residents, one of the raging issues has been the development, especially the plan by Signature Station. I even helped organize a uh, an opportunity for Mr. Marcatoni and his partner to speak to our community um, when we first found out about the rezoning so that we could know what was going on. Um, I did not meet one single resident of my community. Granted, I didn't actually knock. Mr. Marcatoni wasn't home when I knocked on his door. But of the ones that I did speak to, not one of them supported his plan as it, uh, Signature Station's plan as it currently stands, specifically in terms of the residential impact, the plan for the residential, um, and the infrastructure uh, support. For one thing, similar to what he was mentioning with Wilderness Shores, there is a lot to still be built out and developed. Mo a lot of us are still underwater in our homes. We've had a lot of short sales and everything else. We're trying to dig ourselves out to get that economy back, and our house values are not there yet. And bringing in another 230 townhomes is at, at the 200,000 price range is not going to necessarily help our situation in the short term. In terms of the commercial aspects of it, a lot of people are okay with it. We all have a pretty good idea what's probably going to come in there. And we're okay with that. Walmart's there. It's going to happen. We're not against growth. Um, I myself am for well-planned growth that pays for itself. Mr. Mark, uh, Signature Station mentioned that um, this plays for itself in the future with, you know, over a million dollars in revenues and things to come. That's all well and good, well, you know, in terms of all the different revenue that was going to come in, it would be a net growth, and I understand that math. Those are plans for what they think is going to happen down the road. It is not a guarantee. The money isn't there up front. If I understand correctly, one of the county guidelines for proffers is approximately $19,000 per townhome that's built. I don't see that anywhere in his offers being made, uh, his proffers being made for the townhome. I know he's making proffers for the commercial aspects, and that's great. I think the substation donation is wonderful. We're dying for an increased emergency systems, uh, uh, you know, in our, in our area. Um, but that aspect of well, we think we are going to pay for itself in the future when these things get done. A lot of things say they're going to happen. History has a way of repeating itself. Somerset Farms looks nothing like what it was supposed to be when it was first developed. Beezer has come in and just maximized every single dollar they could and completely redesigned it, and so now we're living in different situations. Um, there were unforeseen circumstances. We're now dealing with flooding issues in people's yards at the bottom of the hill where Beezer's built homes because they didn't expect things to go. They thought they had the infrastructure to support the development that was there based on their expected plans, and now all of a sudden, it's not there. And so there can be a lot of unintended consequences by a lot of promises. I don't know if it's possible to redesign this. If Signature Station was willing to come forward and say, just zone our commercial as is for the current plan, three, three minutes, um, Wrap it up we three could minutes. get, so we could, I think we could support that <coughs> for the commercial. Come back in three years when you're ready to do the residential, when you can prove to us the residential is there, and build single-family homes that do pay for themselves, offer those proffers to pay for that development. Um, thank you.
Thank you. Next speaker is Steve Satterfield, 21041 Clarks Mountain Road. Uh, good evening. Uh, I, I believe the proposal tonight raises some serious issues that have already been talked about to some extent. Uh, I'd like to start with the vision to the draft comprehensive plan, which you all know what it says. It says sustain the rural character of Orange County while enhancing and improving the quality of life for all citizens. I don't believe the proposal meets either part of that vision statement. Uh, increased population certainly doesn't make the county more rural. And I, I've listened to the fiscal analysis and I listened to the fiscal analysis six or seven years ago and it said the same thing and others do too. And something's kind of missing in this analysis. You know, if this is all right, all we have to do is look everywhere else where we got a lot of development and we can see how it works for them. It doesn't work for anybody else. I don't think it'll work for us. Incidentally, if you don't remember, some of you probably remember, the county after a flurry of these six or seven years ago contracted for with uh, Springstead or whoever for a, uh, a fiscal impact analysis uh, procedure. Uh, it was delivered, it wasn't very good, it didn't, didn't really add anything to what we already knew and, and, and this is where we are today. Uh, well, as far as the second part of the, uh, the statement, improves the quality of life for all residents, you've heard from some of the residents that are most impacted by it, and I, I don't believe they think it improves the quality of their life. Uh, zoning, you know, is, you all know, is not, a, is not an automatic. Uh, they're probably among the most important decisions that a board will make. The consequences are large and they last a long time. Um, so you have to consider a lot of effects, such as the need, uh, the infrastructure, fiscal effects, which we've heard on. So, you know, when we look at it, there is no need for the project, you know, certainly for the foreseeable future. There's all kinds of commercial residential zoning on Route 3. Uh, and I would like to hope that we're going to learn something from our experience even in this area over the last 30 or 40 years, we zone something, nothing happens for a long time. When it happens, we got no control over it whatsoever. Um, uh, infrastructure, if we develop everything that's already zoned on Route 3, I think infrastructure is going to be in very short supply. And expanding it, it's going to be difficult and expensive. Um, the current comprehensive plan does uh, project mixed use development for this area, but that term has never been defined. It's never been made part of the zoning ordinance. And even if it had, that wouldn't mean that zoning was automatic. Uh, and proffers. Uh, the, you know, the proposal effectively ignores the county proffer policy. Um, and as I noted before, you know, this hadn't worked for, you know, it has, this hadn't been profitable for anybody else. The zone, rezoning does convey a major increase in value to the landowner, the investors. You can't fault them for trying, but I hope the board will protect the current taxpayers from <coughs> being forced to finance uh, the profits. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next speaker Next. is Jonathan Chasen, 7165 Cornfield Lane. Gentlemen, ladies, I'm John Chasen. I'm here tonight representing the Orange County Chamber of Commerce as its most recent past president. And we are here apparently in the minority offering support for this project. Uh, a couple of notes, uh, one uh, Mr. Satterfield uh, referred to. Uh, this is mixed use development. It is something that is uh, designed and it's also part of the uh, comprehensive plan draft. Uh, designed to be an economic development area. We have one area of the county, in my opinion, that will be developed. This is the area. This is the place to do it. It is the place to raise revenues for commercial. And uh, we believe as a, a chamber, this is the best place to have that type of economic development. We think that this development fits that plan. Uh, and we appreciate the applicant and the board's desire to begin commercial development first. I know there's some question about the length of time. Uh, but we certainly would desire to see that commercial development before residential and believe the applicant is attempting to do so. Uh, we do think this is certainly our most promising corridor and because of that, 
we would support it. We already have Walmart right next door and think that it fits well with the character of the area. And um, one more point, uh, given that there was a discussion on proffers, as we all know, that's simply a suggestion. And I think they've made appropriate uh, proffers to, uh, to have the project approved. So we ask for your approval tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> next speaker is Dan Holmes, res president of Culpeper Precision. Hi, my name is Dan Holmes. I'm here on behalf of the Piedmont Environmental Council. I want to read from you or to you from the July 25th, 2006 minutes regarding the signature series station proposal. Time. Mr. Dotson stated, needs to be a better definition of mixed use. Mr. Wallace stated that the Board of Supervisors approved the Somerset Farms development to provide housing to citizens or people wishing to become citizens of Orange County and commented on the number of citizens in opposition to proposed development, which would be neighboring the Somerset development. Mr. Graves indicated that the county will be conducting its own fiscal impact studies in-house since the study done for signature series is in conflict with the one done for Rapidan Crossing with respect to educating the school children in the county. Also expressed concerns regarding the mixed-use definition. Mrs. Pace indicated it would not be prudent to invite more development until the county assesses what is currently available. That's a key point. Mr. Johnson acknowledged trying to make the proffers more that the applicant tried to make the proffers more attractive he also noted that the mixed use definition needs work proposed development is too dense and agreed that there are existing townhomes in the area available to purchase mr dotson moved uh, a motion that included the following a lack of need for the project for denial excuse me including the following reasons a lack of a uh, need for the project for the citizens of the county a need to manage growth in the county an increase in the water runoff which would negatively affect downstream citizens and the development would have a negative effect on water on quality of life for the citizens of the county now those conditions or those uh, points were actually <coughs> stricken from the uh, final decision but I do think that uh, the fact that all five supervisors at the time voted to deny this proposal says volumes in July of 2006 the board at that time recognized the significant flaws with this project um, and while the, the project is mostly the same. It actually has worse proffer package uh, than, uh, than it had it back in 06. A 20-foot buffer for 708, a 70-foot buffer for Route 3, $300,000 at the time of 75% occupancy, question if this will ever occur. Proffers are not worthy of consideration. There's no cha change, excuse me, with regard to the lack of need. Still 15 to 1,800 approved and unbuilt units left in the Route 3 area. 200 plus thousand dollar townhomes behind 220,000 square feet of big box commercial. Does this square with you? One member of the Planning Commission suggests the county should allow the applicant to take a risk if that's what they want to do. Problem is, this is a shared burden. This is a shared risk. Approving this development with this proper package places that burden on the taxpayer of Orange County. The proper policy is there to protect the taxpayer from picking up the tab or subsidizing the developer. Nothing has changed from 06. In fact, it got worse. Please deny this application. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next speaker is Terry Pace, 25485 Dukes Lane, Unionville, Virginia. Hello, I'm Terry Pace from Unionville. Um, I hope that you will um, deny this project. Um, every time a government speculates, the taxpayer loses. We have um, Solyndra, banks too big to fail, Obamacare. The government is not good at speculating, and that is all that you have in this project. It's a speculation. And um, the taxpayers cannot bear the burden of this speculation. If this is a good project, then it needs to be um, brought back with more detail and um, firmer numbers, not a speculation for the taxpayers to be burdened with picking up the pieces when it doesn't unfold. Um, and uh, I, I hope that um, we can expect more from our local government than we've been getting from our federal government. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and the next speaker is Kevin Carr, 28643 Moral Way. Hi, my name's Keevan Carr, and um, I live out uh, off of uh, Burr Hill Road. 
um, taxpayer here in the county. I'm also a commercial uh, subcontractor uh, doing uh, tenant build out. And I'd like to see more work here in the county, you know, for us instead of having to go elsewhere, but not at the expense of Orange County taxpayers. This project, I had an hour yesterday that I took out of my day and went and skimmed the packet and just from the items that I could pick up, just skimming through it on the surface. Um, and then I saw the revised propers outside tonight. They originally wanted 227,000 square feet. Now they want 237,000 square feet, but they're going to give you $300,000 to go to the 911 center. It just pays for itself, you know, with 10,000 extra square feet. They want 230 townhomes. They only want to have propers that I could read on 125 townhouses at the very low rate of $1,500 proffer, $187,500 on 125 townhomes, but nothing on the rest of them. They proposed, they based their study that I saw on 40 children out of 230 townhomes. They'd have seniors and singles in there. Who's going to discriminate against a potential buyer and raking in the cash and these people got two kids apiece and all of a sudden we got 460 kids coming into the school system that's not going to pay for itself. You take, you know, uh, even if it was $2,000 proffers and a kid starts in the first grade right there, okay, and you have 20 of those children, 20 times 2 is $40,000. That's the salary for the teacher for one year. What happens the other 11 years for the cost of that right there? It goes on to Orange County taxpayers, okay? The principal owner of this development lives in another county, lives in Stafford County, okay? It's not going to affect him in any way. Um, you, can't dis you just can't discriminate against those buyers. We could end up with a whole lot of children in this county, you know, right there. Um, there's high tension power lines with the big towers that run down through this property. It's been a while, but I thought there was a study, you know, about high tension power lines causing cancer in people who live too close to them. I may not be exact on that, but um, it seems to me like there was something like that. I don't know if it was ever proven or not, but it was out there. Um, what's going to happen if the revenue that they're proposing in this study here doesn't come up to expectations. Are they going to be willing to foot the bill for the difference to cover all of that right there? A and K is selling townhomes right up the street there in Germana Heights for $170,000. Three minutes, sir. Okay. There's been a lot of ifs that we've heard here. But are they going to, if we don't meet the revenues, will they pay the difference? And I heard a saying one time, if a bullfrog, okay? And this is just like mom and dad. They asked a few years ago, mom, for permission to do this. Mom told them no. And now they're coming back and asking dad for the same thing. Think about that. Thank you. And the last speaker I have signed up is Barbara Colbert, 14201 Cottonville Road. Thank you for hearing my remarks tonight and thank you for your public service. I realize that my comments are coming at a fairly late point in the discussion and review of this proposal and I hope you will apply them in the best context possible. Trails are mentioned in some of the documentation of this proposal but are not mentioned in the proffers. I submit to you that trails in Orange County are a critical element that must be included in the development of our county now. It is very important for people to be able to get out of their cars and walk, jog, push a stroller, ride a bike or ride a horse. Most importantly, ride a horse. The kind of trail I would like you to consider for this project and all future rezoning subdivision in Orange County is a multi-use trail that runs around the perimeter of the property. This trail, when linked with others that have been formed in a similar fashion, will create the network of trails that is hoped for in the draft Orange County 2013 comprehensive plan. Creating space for these perimeter multi-use trails as, a re as rezoning occurs will ensure that Orange County citizens have access to the outdoors. There's a gentleman who I've heard in some of these public hearings state something, something to the effect of, we all live in subdivisions. If you don't want subdivisions, go live on a mountain and we will all be happy. At first, I was a little insulted by this, but it made me think. I grew up in subdivisions. 
And upon reflecting on what that was like, I realized that what made me a happier, healthier person was access to the outdoors. I, went, I walked to some of my schools. I could walk to the barn where I had my first horse. We could ride horses around the edges of the cornfields and the track team could jog on the side of the roads. Access to the outdoors has given me an appreciation for our environment and I place great value on enabling access for others. A particular group that I want to mention is the horse people of Orange County. In talking to many of them, I have been assured that access to trails and places to ride is a very important issue. Premier trails will allow our horse industry and the associated economy to continue as land use changes in many areas. Please consider the implementation of perimeter multi-use trail easements, linear park, if you will, in order to ensure access to the outdoors for Orange County citizens. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> that was the last speaker I had. Sorry. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. residential component, correct? So um, Mr. Carr's comment about the $300,000 for the 911 center and the $1,500 for the um, residential, that, that kind of got replaced. So I just, I just didn't want people to think that there was the $300,000 for the 911 no. center and the residential. There will be no cash proffers attached to the um, residential. Just so you know, I wanted you to know that part. my uh, comments until we get to the point of a decision. Okay. I actually have a question still. <coughs> <coughs> well, ask. Okay. Much to my stepmother's chagrin, who is a math teacher, she's going to be rather embarrassed that my math isn't the greatest in the world, but um, I'm, I'm still kind of hooked up on this financial part of it. Um, in, in, in using the um, $200,000 mark, on the residential, um, our current tax rate is 72 cents, and that that's still not 600,000. So I'm I'm really curious how you're getting to 600,000. And and again, you may have a different calculator than me, but it, it doesn't add up to that. It comes up to 331,000. So really, minus 400,000, there's a 331,000 exactly. Right, mm -hmm. but you were saying you have it's going to generate 600,000. That's right. In income. It gets another 120,000 in personal property taxes, 54,000 in retail sales taxes, 27,000 in meals taxes, 23,000 in utility taxes, 10,000 in motor vehicle licenses, and uh, 4,000 in recordation taxes. If you add those all up, it comes to $517,770. Okay, because it made it, it, it kind of was a little deceptive. I was thinking the residential part of it meant the actual um, that, that taxes is, on that the is, residential. That is just residential, but it's not, not just real estate. You're speaking well, of real is, estate. Yeah, I and I agree with estate. you on the 331000 okay, That's right. I was trying, I was I was gonna, she was probably gonna tell me I needed to go back to kindergarten because my math wasn't quite um, figuring up there. You're right on. Um, and you, then, go ahead. Are you assuming those rec recordation taxes occur every year? No. Um, That's just a one-time shot. Yeah, it, over 20 years, an average of turnover of a unit every five years, over 20 years. So it's, a, it's, an, it's an average one year out of a 20 year turnover for development. Uh, that's a typical rate in the United States is uh, every five years a unit in a development will turn over. Now the, uh, uh, 
is the uh, sales tax. Is that sales tax generated within the uh, uh, within the commercial portion of this? Uh, uh it, it is the total expenditures by residents less the proportion that is spent on site. So it is corrected for any expenditures by residents on site. Uh, I don't have the full figure in front of me, but it's many times over $54,000 uh, in, in total retail sales taxes. That's that's spent outside of the outside of this of this commercial this development. Yes. You're talking about spending elsewhere in the county. Yes. Increasing the amount of commercial, the amount of commercial that's actually um, being that the, the fifteen thousand, the fifteen hundred, no fifteen thousand square feet of increased commercial um, generates the revenue to um, make the three hundred thousand dollar profit to the nine one one center. Um, my question is, um, how how is that how does that work? I, I read it. It says um, the applicant or signs of the proper monetary contributions to the county to be directed towards the construction of a new 91 facility on county-owned property. These contributions will amount to a total of three hundred thousand um, dollars. These contributions will be paid to the county once seventy-five percent of the co approved commercial square footage has obtained occupancy permits. Um, I, I, how how long right now are you projecting before you know a guesstimate? I, I realize that's um, difficult considering. Um, I think I understand y'all aren't going to be the developers. You're actually well, we're, we're developing, but we're, we're obviously we're going to attract a, a large increase. Yeah. So what what? Um, but uh, how that evolves uh, initially. We were going to build the a shell for the 91 Center on our property. Yeah, I know. And that's how, how that evolved into the $300,000 payment for an off-site construction. As far as the additional 15,000 square feet, that came into play because we were going to add a extra area of where the community building was going to be placed to build the shell, and all, also to to be able to pay for it and add that additional 15,000 square feet because of the infrastructure that was going to be included. Right. My question to you is, when are you estimating that that 75 percent? Because the reason I ask that, in proper number one, you're actually saying 25 um, percent of your commercial or three years for the residential. We, so it doesn't sound like it's going to happen within three years that you're anticipating this. Actually, we do anticipate it to be within three years. Um, that's that's really our plan, as and that's really why I guess it was misstated in that first proffer that we anticipate that 25 percent number to to go pretty quick, as well as uh, you know the three years was just there for you know that's something that you know we would probably we would strike if that was a, a major point of contention. However, that the, the uh, as far as what we're projecting that commercial, absolutely, the first three years is what that's really where we came into play that that first three years would be strictly going after commercial activity and then the residential would follow that when that market comes back. As everyone is saying, yes, there are townhouses in the mid 100s and, and Tricord is building as well, but then their, their price points have come up. But you know, as far as uh, where they're building, you know, we have a location that's going to enable those residents to be able to walk across the way either to Walmart and they're going to be able to walk to our property or through the trails that we'll provide to uh, go have some some food. However, uh, that it, it's going to be about location and people's choice. When, we, when I first moved to Orange, I, I moved to Somerset. I was involved with that uh, development, but you know, people want to move. You know, they want a choice of where to move, move or move their business, right? You know, as far as what's been zoned for the last 20 years, in Orange County, there just hasn't been activity. <laughs> it's been zoned. It's it's going to still sit there because nobody likes that location. Where we are, we have the infrastructure. We have, you know, Walmart's obviously going to generate quite a bit. Here who own commercial property might not like that comment too. I, I don't either, to be honest with you. I wish they would. <laughs> wish there would be more activity, well, but let, let me ask you there this. hasn't how, been. How do you envision this proper working? Because let, let's um, obviously, you know, you've been in conversation with um, with county staff, and I and I and I thank you all because you've been in conversation with sure. us as well. Um, 
one of the, the concerns for us, if you've been paying attention, is our 911 center is inadequate. Absolutely. Um, it, it's probably not going to wait three years before it, it really needs to be um, done. But my question to you would be, how, how do you envision, um, tell me how you envision this proper working if the prop, if the um, 911 center has to be built before your 75% of commercial is done. And um, it says in here, it says in here new, um, a new building, but I mean, you even mentioned it in your remarks, but um, at the same time, so if we've already built it because we couldn't wait for your, um, 75 percent of commercial then we receive um well you will get it when that commercial happens i mean we we can't i, I guess guarantee it at that point i mean yeah, we anticipate actually, that the proper that, actually says new 911 center so if, the, if it's already built then it's no longer new so huh. in fact can i address yeah please do Thank I, i'm you. confident speaking for the applicant if the language needs to be worked so that it's not intended to be a loophole so that the construction happens then there's a request for the money and they say oh no it's already occurred I'm confident that if that is a concern and, and that can be addressed the three hundred thousand dollars would be paid whether if y'all start construction tomorrow on a 911 system when the trigger hits at 75 percent the money will be paid absolutely well we need to amend it so that it doesn't say construction or new that it could be or purchase for equipment for e911 or other safety purposes you know we can fix that language and we're absolutely open to looking at that um uh, i'm sorry go ahead uh, why is it you don't want a screening buffer along route three well we're providing a buffer uh, we did not want to say landscape at this moment because we're going to try to preserve the trees that exist there today that's really going to be a factor of how the site plan lays out Th that those trees right now don't screen it anymore I mean, there's been enough of those taken out. There's no real screen. But we didn't, we didn't touch the existing trees. We left the 100-foot buffer when we, we uh, timbered the property. Well, the, the point is, if you're, trying to, if you're trying to provide visual screening, the way this thing reads is you can have 70 foot of gravel, uh, and uh, uh, you don't get any visual screening, which uh, along Route 3, I'm trying to maintain. I think that uh, in terms of this is a... Uh, uh, a uh, well-traveled corridor through Orange County, and we want to keep it looking nice. And uh, uh, as I say, you've taken a number of trees out, uh, which <coughs> seems to me you need to establish uh, further ones uh, to uh, to make that uh, to screened. And the way this reads now, it could be 70 foot of gravel. So, is that a proper you're willing to we, we're find we're willing to look better? At it. Absolutely, more, that was not our intent to. Put 70 foot of gravel. Our intent was to, to create an aesthetic buffer that would. Uh, it would actually be cheaper to plant trees and put 70 foot of gravel in the position. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, obviously, we're, we have uh, a lot invested in our property and we, we want the opportunity to be able to develop it. Not to just. Uh, we want it to be aesthetically pleasing for, for everyone who comes from the county and, and who lives there as well. That was our intent. I have a question for BDOT. Mr. Painter, how are you this evening? Good. Thank Dan Painter with BDOT. Yes. Um, I, one of the questions um, that we've received, um, or I've received several emails and calls and just comments, um, Somerset Farms only has one entrance in and out. And, you know, I, I, I appreciate you being here and, and talking us through this, so I don't want to seem like I'm being a little, I, um, all of that dumping on, um, and you know, I know there's the whole stoplight issue. Well, you know, every time, you know, stop, that's what stoplights are there for, for people, um, which, okay, so you're going to have Walmart dumping out, you're going to have 230 townhomes plus 237,000 square feet of of retail. Now realizing not all of it's going to dump out, but anybody who's going left is going to dump out there, which considering 75%, I'm guessing, of the population will then be going left out of there. It's um, a lot for, um, so how does VDOT? Um, okay. 
you know, they, they had to prepare a, a transportation impact assessment. Mm -hmm. We reviewed that. Um, there's more than just 708 as a ways to get in and out of there. You know, they're going to be required to build Hampton Lane, which will be an access point, which will connect into the residential section they have, as well as the commercial, so people can use Hampton Lane both as a way to get into the site as well as leave the site. Um, also, the folks that live um, behind uh, the commercial centers can also use AAK Boulevard and go down to um, Flat Run. So, I mean, there are a couple, three different ways, will be three different ways for people to get in and out. And people will disperse and find different ways that serves their purpose based on the time of day they're going. Be all that as it may, we did look at the uh, transportation analysis and with the signals, with the turn lanes, with the receiving lanes, um, during the peak hours, uh, it will accommodate the traffic. Okay. We don't, there's no indications of any sort of backups. You know, with them, with the proper uh, turn lanes, and if they do have to do the crossover at Hampton Lane, um, which I suspect there's a good chance we may be looking at that, um, it should handle it just fine. So what you just said, um, so if y'all determine, y'all I mean DDOT determine later on that the crossover needs to occur there, um, will the applicant be required to take on? And then um, is. Hampton Lane, is all of that going to connect over to A&K Boulevard? Well, you might see there's there's a proffer, and I forget which one it is, but uh, a proffer number nine, I believe, which calls for a 50-foot easement slash right-of-way um, that the applicant will be dedicating to the, to the county. Um, it is intended for if a um, connection is deemed to be needed between uh, A&K and Hampton Lane for that to be put through. It doesn't identify who will pay for that. More than likely, uh, the VDOT, I suspect, would be asked to pay for that. Because um, VDOT has so much money right now. It's just they're, flowing I mean, in, let giving, me tell they're you. They're giving out yeah. extra all the yeah, time. It is. But um, we couldn't say when it's going to be built. But, you know. And same token, it depends on at what point in time in their development. Um, they'll have to come through, as you know, if they go over 60,000 square feet and do a special use uh, review. Um, at that point in time, we'll be getting uh, additional transportation impact assessments. Um, we can, if we determine that things have developed in such a way that additional accesses are needed, or this, this cut through, if you will, behind the site, or between the, the residential and the commercial is needed, um, I can't say for sure we can force the developer to do it, but I think we can raise this as an issue, and it's you guys are the ones who review these SUPs and approve them. So. All we get at this point in time is a reservation for right away. Um, what about on Route 3 itself? I've had a few people ask the question about the impact, the combined impact for the Walmart, this development, and others uh, in Route 3. Any, any uh, well, there, crystal you know, ball I, view of what's, what's happening there? Well, they like say as the signal is designed with the turn lanes that are uh, designed and the number of receiving lanes, uh, both in and out on the site, uh, all the transportation analysis indicate that it will work uh, just fine. Are, but are we at 50% capacity, 20% capacity, 80% capacity? I'm trying to get some relative sense of... Well, it, it will operate at level of service C. That's one thing we look at, which is, is, which is an acceptable level of service. Okay. Um, Percentage-wise, it's, it's hard to say exactly, but it's a comfortable, something you try to achieve. Right. What's the current uh, uh, level of certification, level of service at the entrance to Lake of the Woods? I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. You know, actually, it, it, it's probably... You didn't talk about Signature Station, not Lake of the Woods tonight. Yeah, okay. I, well, I didn't no, come prepared for that one, but... Um, but this is part of the traffic. You know, the <laughs> fact of the matter is that all the traffic clears the intersection every cycle. You know, and no one's left dangling out there and have to wait for another cycle. Typically, unless you've seen different. But I've, what I've, what I've, I've seen is that a couple of lights. <laughs> there's a couple of lights. Well, it's it's probably in the C D range at this point in time. I don't think it. I know it's not F. I don't think it's E. What does that mean? F means failing, just like in school. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. You know, uh, A is great. Know. F is bad. E is you need to improve. D is you're sliding down there. C is acceptable in some households. Well, as a point of reference for the, this area, what, how is what's 3 and 20, uh, particularly 3 coming west and turning left at 20? Is, is that an F? I, I don't have all that. I'm sorry I didn't come prepared to, to address <laughs> those other locations, you know. I, I'll be more than happy to come back, but we, we can discuss that. Um, 
You know, the, we would like to do improvements there. We have issues there with the bridges and stuff like that. It can definitely, 3 and 20 would definitely benefit from some improvements. How much anticipated increase in traffic through those uh, through that intersection? Which? Through the 3 and 20 and through the uh, uh, Lake of the Woods uh, front. From this site? Yeah, from this because development. of this site. Well, they interpret they did uh, now analyze those intersections, uh, Flat Run and three, as well as three and twenty, and they they work acceptable levels, levels C or D. So I, I'm not sure off the top of my head how much more traffic it is. Okay. I can't I can't nail that down for you exactly. You you may I'm sure you realize uh, Walmart will be uh, installing a signal at Flat Run and three. Um, which is going to uh, make that intersection work good, allow that intersection to work at a good, acceptable level of service. All right. Is that it? I have a, yep. a you're good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, that's right. Um, the water storage, um, I don't know, Lee, if you want to share your information about um, Water. Well, the water storage, which is uh, which is uh, uh, a part of, uh, they need to, they need to get uh, with a site plan to be able to hook up to RSA. They need they need the tank for water storage. Currently, the water capacity is is uh, adequate given the current uh, the currently. <coughs> You, the current users <coughs> and the current people who have already been guaranteed water because they're, they're paying a non-user fee or they are uh, they've already paid the the developers already paid the uh, hookup fees the question is is that uh, there probably isn't enough uh, in terms of what's already been zoned as approved there's probably not enough water capacity to, to cover those that have already been Zoned for uh, residential, uh, and this will uh, and these 230 will only exacerbate the problem in terms of the capacity uh, for the peak usage of the current uh, uh, current <coughs> water uh, water plant. So, uh, uh, whoever gets there fastest uh, is the guy who uh, who gets his uh, uh, who gets the uh, because at some point. There is not going to be enough water, and somebody's going to have to come up with a price for expanding or developing a new water plant, a new water purification plant. <coughs> Any other questions, comments? Are there any other proffers, proffer language that we? think are to be clarified or have we covered uh, I at least in this current version it would be sounds like there's language to be dealt with in item one at a minimum item one six and seven yeah we need to clarify that and, and we'll I will communicate with the council and will there may be some other minor clarifications but I don't see anything major beyond those issues that we need to the triggering mechanisms I want a little more detailed language on, but that's related to those ones you just referenced. Okay. Um, at, at one point, um, and I wasn't part of the conversations, but I believe um, staff was in um, contact with you all about um, the, the, the intention right now is the level of um, the, the, I heard you say, um, you know, we can't build a $150,000 townhome because we wouldn't recover our costs so the the, the cost of the townhome um, needs to be higher um, however if there is a subsidy involved in the townhome you therefore could recover your cost and and I believe that um, um, or this is what we were told that you all we're kind of amenable to um, talking about um, proffering a size, uh, a, a size limit on um, on the townhomes. So much to my chagrin, when I when I saw the proffers, um, 
that that wasn't listed. So, um, you know, to be quite frank, to keep them from becoming, um, you know, 230 um, low-income uh, government-subsidized um, townhome apartments behind a Walmart. I'm um, not aware of any subsidy that would be uh, available to us to develop. That was not even well, close. Well, Round Hill Meadows here in Orange got one. So, I mean, they, they were able to. Uh, uh, that is that is far from where we were even thinking that uh, we had discussed that we didn't even think that was that's why it's not included in there because that's not something we uh, can even fathom thinking um, well you know I, I, I appreciate it and and I say this to you with all the love in my heart my daddy says a fast nickel is better than a slow dime and um, my, my fear is three four five six years from now when, when nothing has happened there, because like you said earlier, I mean, you've got a person in this audience right now who's got residential <coughs> and commercial, and it's not far from where you are. Sure. So, and it's been sitting there for a little bit. Um, my fear is, and, then, and then, then you're not meeting, you know, I, I, I hope this, I hope for, for the rest of the citizens of Orange County that these numbers are correct. But again, I'm not a mathematician or a, a financial impact analysis person, but I've never been anywhere where residential, you know, paid for itself. But that's a comment we all make, and it's off mm -hmm. the cuff, and it's a, it's a sure. cute little, you know, uh, under, I a understand. little bit of propaganda. But um, my, my, my fear is that that's what's going to happen because um, you can only – Put out so much, and you're not getting anything back, and you need a return. And um, I don't see the protection from. I mean, I don't see the protection in this plan at all from the citizens on the western end of the county. Um, you know, I, I would like to one day get in and pick your brain and understand how these financial impacts work because more people want more stuff. And you said you based it on our current budget. But our current budget isn't taking into consideration any of the, the amenities that this type of development wants. Um, you know, people live in townhomes. They want to live in a town. That's why it's called a townhome. It's not called a rural home. And um, so there are certain things that they expect when they live in a townhome. And that... You know, it's more sheriffs. It's more of sheriff's the, deputies. And it is reflected through the debt service. Uh, the costs of facilities and services are reflected in the budget, uh, with the debt service being the ongoing cost of the facilities you build throughout the county. And this is quite apart from what is being proffered here. So that um, th this, and this is the, these are th numbers are all in constant 2013 dollars. So we're not attempting to project any kind of inflation in here that would build up the numbers higher. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's based in constant dollars, and it is based on the budget, and the budget does include uh, costs of facilities in debt service as an ongoing expense. Um, and you just said that the number, you just said the magic word, you said <laughs> debt service. And we are already at you know, capacity. Matter of fact, we're over capacity now on our debt service, and 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 that, you know, I, I hear that, and that that means more infrastructure and more stuff being built, and that six hundred thousand dollars is is not even two cents on our tax rate. So it it's the revenue, and it's great. I love revenue. We all love money. Um, I'm not gonna lie. It it just I just don't. It just doesn't. The commercial I love all day long. I'm not gonna lie about that. I think all of us agree. If this was a flat commercial, the planning commission said the exact thing. Even Mr. Chasen stood up and referenced the commercial. He didn't reference the residential. They weren't saying, "Oh, yay, we love 230 more townhomes." He referenced the commercial. Everybody loves the commercial. It's the residential that, quite frankly, scares the poop out of us or me, because there's so much down there already available. And back in the late 60s when Lake of the Woods was rezoned and Wilderness Shores was rezoned, we never thought we'd be here right now. But, I mean, oh, it is what it is. But I appreciate it. Well, I'd I appreciate be, I'd be coming. happy to meet with you and go over the details if you want.
Well, I, I would I would love a square foot proffer to protect the citizens, but I'm going to be quite frank with you. I think you could give me a puppy for every house in nineteen thousand dollars, and I'm going to have a hard time with the residential. But we'll see what you do with it. Understood. I mean, you 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 hear you heard everybody tonight, and um, I love the commercial part of it. I told you that three years oh, ago absolutely. when you were looking for votes three years ago with this, sure. and you didn't have them then, but you got them now. So. Well, or you think you do? No, <laughs> we hope we do. Uh, we think it's a, we think it's a, a, a positive project. I mean, with the uh, you know everybody yes they want commercial, but with that commercial, it's going to demand more development as far as activity. Right now, there isn't much activity going on, and at the moment, Somerset is essentially built out. Uh, Wilderness Shores is a standstill. Grant that they can begin as well. It, you know that's however they uh, they look at their their development. Mansoor as well. He's got his going and. You know, they're selling in the mid-100s. That's, I, I hope he can sell them. Because if anything, that's going to bring the market back. Um, at this point, we feel that our location and what we're going to provide is going to be an attractive product that people will want to buy. And being that we're where we are and what we're going to have in our commercial, what we're, we're planning to put in there, is going to generate that uh, activity. And with that activity, the commercial will come. I mean, right now, we've had a, a very difficult time attracting that commercial. Now that obviously Walmart is, is, uh, is a new development here, that's what's going to help us generate, as well as uh, the prospect of additional residents that will be spending their county dollars in the county. You know, at this point, we're, you know, Walmart is fantastic, but some more revenue in the county, I think, would, uh, yeah, would help our debt service at this point. Because, uh, you know, at this point, it's not going to cover everything what's happening. I mean, I, I understand the, the school situation, how difficult it is. It's, it's not pretty. <laughs> um, but uh, we feel that you know it, it's a positive project. I, I don't have a crystal ball to say that's exactly going to happen. And we're more than happy to sit down with Tom and, and try to give some more assurances. Um, and we're very open to that. Well, I, I, I greatly appreciate you being willing to do that. And, and just appreciate our struggle because Understood. I mean I, you know I, I kind of did a little joke to Grover a little tongue in cheek maybe we'll throw a little extra <laughs> money in to you all and y'all go bet on the ponies in West Virginia and see how that works too because that that this is what it basically equates to for us betting on the ponies right now well we, we don't feel it's that uh, that risky at this point Ooh, uh, okay. but uh, and you're, we're not asking for money from the county I, I don't believe at all based on a third party telling us the the numbers are or what they are based on the county's budget. It, the numbers don't lie in what, what we're showing, what will happen when we bring in these new residents, as well as this new commercial. And you know, that is why we're confident that that will pay, this mixed use development as a whole will pay for itself, plus some. And uh, that's, that's why we've, we've stuck to it for all these years, because we believe that that's what's gonna happen. I mean, right now, Orange is finally starting to see some uh, positive activity. It's been dead for the last 12 years. And uh, you know, as far as any re residential rezonings, there really haven't been. The last one was in Gordonville. And we see what happened there with the, the crazy proffers that were sent out there, and that place went bankrupt. Uh, it's gotta be an economically feasible project to move forward. And we feel with what we're, we're, we're supplying to the county as a project as a whole, we'll, we'll supplement uh, for, for many years. And, uh, I, I can't say that too much, too many times at this point. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Um, just so we clarify, did I hear a willingness to proffer either some square foot limitation and or maybe tied to median home price? So some that's, uh, we were looking for some additional comments on that, Tom, and that just never happened with the time frames. And, uh, so we're good with we, we can talk working about on that. that. Okay, that's all I wanted to so that it was on the record that, that we're good with that. <laughs> All right. <coughs> I make a motion that we actually um, um, table this discussion until the um, the May 14th May 14th um, meeting. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Mr. Zab? Aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Goodwin? Aye.
we'll bring this back up again on the 14th. To adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.